Martin Hall here with the great Rory McIlroy and his longtime coach, Michael Bannon. He's guided you since childhood. Thank you so much for allowing us to do this. It's terrific to be with Thank both you, of you. Uh, look, this is going to be like a fly on the wall thing. We're going to look at how you two work together. And let's get started with, well, it's the driver. You've got the big dog out. Let's talk fundamentals. What did you two do from early days to now? What do you work on, Michael, with the fundamentals with the driver for Rory? I suppose for me, it's uh, when we started off, Rory would pick an intermediate target and we would set him up and he would have the ball inside your left foot, left? Yeah, yeah, inside the left foot, especially with a driver. I mean, not. I, I sometimes have a tendency to get the ball too far forward, trying to sort of lean back and, and get, yeah. you know, get a bit of launch on it. But anywhere sort of, yeah, in, you know, on the left heel is a, is, a, is a decent place for me to set up with the driver. Where would you pick that intermediate target? I think that'd be my first question to you. How yeah, would you so, pick Yeah, so, I mean, for me to target? try and set up with any club, but especially the driver, um, you know, I think I'm set up somewhere over this blue flag in front of me here. I mean, I, I'm, I'm looking at, I'm trying to pick something out in the, in the ground, maybe two feet in front of me. Uh, and I, I pick a spot there and then I see it. And then I just try and my first, I'm always just trying to line myself up to this spot which is basically, it's this little grain of sand, this pebble I can see here. And I, I set up to it there. And I know that once I look up at my target, I know that I'm, I'm aiming exactly where I need to. And that's, you know, that's, I feel it's very, it's much easier to, to aim at a point that's just in front of you than it is to aim at something 200 yards away. Michael, is that something Rory has always done or something you encouraged him to do at a young age? Well, it's, it'll be hard for him to remember. It's been so long ago, but that would have been what we would have done, you know, is to try and line him up that way. And I think with the body alignment, Rory has, uh, he's always more comfortable, a little open. A little open. It? Sometimes with the driver, I could get a little open with my upper body and a little close with my, my lower body. So the, the, the two lines don't, so I, I mean, there's a lot of times I'll use an alignment stick and put that on the ground just for a reference to, to know that, that where my feet and my knees, hips, shoulders are, are all aligned in the, in the right direction. Have you ever used any images with Rory for setup? I mean, some people talk about railway tracks. Is that anything you've ever done? You no, know, in the early yeah. days, that would have been would have been the railway tracks. Yeah. Uh, you know, we would say that the outer railway track at the ball points at the target, and then the inner one is where the the alignment, the feet, knees, hips, and shoulders are all lined too. And hopefully, with that, then we can sort of gauge and get that sense of lining up parallel. Parallel yeah. is the big word. Parallel is a big word, but also yeah. for me. Those railway tracks are a great visual for someone, but sometimes for me, as I was saying, with my tendency to be open with my upper body and, and maybe a little closed with my lower, is I try to, to feel like that, that railway track at the ball is, is parallel to the target, but even just go a little bit, this, just a little bit left with the lower body. So I, I feel sometimes that, that encourages me, especially with the driver. I, I feel like my, my impact position is sort of set already. You know, I'm, I'm, I, it, it enables my left hip to clear a little bit more. Um, and, it, you know, I think with the setup of the golf swing, if you have a very solid setup and, and very good basic fundamentals, it makes the motion of swinging a club that much easier. Well, I can't wait any longer. I'm here with Rory McIlroy and Michael Bannon. You've got to hit one, Rory. You've got <laughs> no to hit problem. One. We've I got will... more to talk about with the fundamentals, but yep. I'm going to get every bit out of this that I can. No so problem. let's see you smash one down there. True Rory McIlroy fashion, I'm sure. Shot. Yeah, Michael said good shot. It certainly yeah. was. Yeah, there we it go. It certainly take that. was. That was an absolute corker, as Henry Longhurst would have said. Now, look, Michael, you told me something just before the cameras were rolling. I wonder if Roy remembers. You told me about something you did with his grip early on, because as a teacher, I'm fascinated yeah. about this this wonderful journey you two have had and the, this this Beethoven that you got as a <laughs> as a young man. I Very mean, true. just a genius, obviously. But talk a little bit about the grip and what you did with the grip, because I think it was fascinating. Well, in the early days, whenever Rory started to play golf, his grip uh, was very, very strong. It might have been as far over as on the left hand as four knuckles. Yeah. So I did explain to him that, you know, that's good for uh, him for a while. But once he got stronger, then the right hand would take over and he would, would end up hooking the ball. So I kind of left it to him. I knew that he had to change it at one time. And it was interesting because he actually came to me when he was about 11 or 12 and said, I think it's time to change my grip. Do you yeah. remember that yourself, clearly? Yeah, I do. I mean, I, I've always been one to... I mean, and it does go back to those days. I've always taken responsibility for my own game, and I, 
you know, I'm always, I'm still not trying to think of ways that I can improve and get better. And, and even still, we, I mean, we made a, back in, in the middle of 2016, so not that long ago, we made a little tweak to my grip. I felt like, and I actually changed the grips on my clubs. I had, um, I had reminders or rib grips. Um, and I felt like the grip, I was, I was gripping it too much in my fingers and my left hand was getting a little strong again. So I went back to round grips so that I could get a little bit, not weak, but, but a little more neutral and, um, in, my, in my left hand. And I remember playing the French Open in 2016 and feeling very uncomfortable with my grip all week because I was just trying to make a slight little change to it. And obviously you grip the club a certain way for so long, any little bit of difference is going to feel quite awkward for, for that first week or so. so uh, I'm always trying to change things and well, not trying to improve things and trying to trying to get, make them better. I, I think you used one word there and I'd like your comments both, if you would please on that. You said that felt uncomfortable. You played the French Open with an uncomfortable grip. I think a lot of people who would be watching this think, well, you know, R Rory McIlroy, he must always be comfortable over the ball. Are you always comfortable over the ball? No, not at all. Um, because I, I very much believe in the process and I, I believe in, in in improvement, there's always going to be that little period of change, which is going to be uncomfortable. Uh, you know, even even now with some of the stuff I'm working on in my swing, it's it, it's not 100% natural for me to do it. But I know in the long run, it's going to be good for me and it's going to make me a better golfer. I, I think that is so vital to the people watching this piece. So I think you've worked on correct as opposed to comfortable, which I think is terrific for both of you. Um, we talked as well, Michael, about the difference between a little bit between alignment and aim. Can you yes. just talk about those two things for us, please? Well, the two things are connected. Uh, the alignment is aligning all the parts of your body from your toes, your knees, your hips and shoulders and try to get them parallel. And then what we do is we aim that on the railway track. So, right. you know, you could have a railway track, but you could have your alignment set perfect, but aiming in the wrong direction. So you try and align your body parts, first of all, get a good posture with it, and then align your, your toes here and your whole body parallel to the railway track that the ball's on. That's the outer railway track. Uh, now that we're in stance and you've hit at least one wonderful shot this morning, I'm sure you'll hit many more. <laughs> Can we just talk a little bit about ball position? Yeah, um, for sure. And we're using yes. the driver, obviously, so we want yeah. to... Do you encourage Roy to hit up with the driver a little bit, Michael? No, well, I mean, Roy knows him. He's a very much a, a sensory player, a field player, and he knows what he has to do, and he will place that ball in the, in the position that he needs to play a certain shot. I mean, Roy can play all shots. I mean, he'll tell you himself he can play any shots he, he wants. Uh, for example, he can play a shot which is very, very interesting. It's called the, we call it the bullet. And, can, uh, can we see it? Yeah, sure. Yeah, you can see it. Sure. What, what so, is the bullet? So the bullet is basically, you know, if it's a windy day, into the wind. Um, Did you grow up in the wind? A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. Uh, you wouldn't think it with how high I hit it sometimes. But um, so basically it's me getting into my setup and knowing that I need to hit a low driver into the wind. And I really don't do much differently. I mean, I don't, the ball's still up on my stance, but basically all I'm trying to do here is, you know, I, I'm, when I get to the top with, a, with my normal drive, there's a little bit of right, and, and I do hit up on the ball. And this, I'm trying to sort of level out my uh, angle of attack. So, it, you know, it's a much shallower, much pe more piercing ball flight. So I'll see if I can do one here. But basically all I'm trying to do, all my thought is, is trying to keep my height on the downswing and not, getting into my right side so much. Here it comes, the bullet, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, well, that was probably less than half the height of the previous shot. I'm aware of what I'm doing, but I'm, I'm still a field player, and, and, and all I feel during that shot is, is I, I, from the top, I keep my height a little bit more, and I shallow out my angle of attack, and the ball comes out a little bit lower. Yeah, I think that's interesting uh, that the T height didn't change there because a lot of people I try to hit it that. lower. And I noticed that. Can I ask you just one more thing that um, uh, um, I, I have a feeling you two have worked on? Width in the takeaway, artificial width, too much width, not enough width. Talk about width in the takeaway, please, Michael. Well, I think the width in the takeaway is, is created at the very uh, initial stage of the swing where you get that connection between uh, the body term and the arm swing going back together. Uh, Sometimes people can try to create uh, too much width by going back and the body doesn't turn enough and they're over here. It's the wrong way to do it. You must get that connection from the very start of your left arm and your body turning together. And is that something that you work on, Rory? Yeah, it is, because I, 
I like the I like the feeling of width. I like to feel like when, especially with the driver, I take it back and I've got a nice wide turn. But if you don't, if if everything doesn't work away together, and all of a sudden you do this, you're so out of sync and you're disconnected, and then you're going to have to compensate at some point during your swing. So, yeah, for me, it's I love that feeling of width, but it all has to turn back together as one unit. Can and we see that? Yeah. Can we hit one? Yeah. Let's That'd be hit great. One. Uh, going through the process here, he's picking out his intermediate target, as he said. The grip is good. The train lines, the train track is good. Here we go. Nice, good takeaway. turn. Nice bit of width. That was, right. still, that was still fine, the edge of the fairway. Gentlemen, that was fantastic. Michael, join me in the middle here, please. Um, so the takeaway is there for you at home. You need to get the alignment correct, the train tracks, that's yes. really important. The ball position certainly matters. Mm -hmm. uh, intermediate target, yes, that absolutely matters. And then some width in the takeaway. It's interesting to me that a player of your caliber still works on what many would think is the simple stuff. Easier, but it's vital. Yeah, isn't but it? that is that's that's me. If if you get the simple stuff right in the golf swing, everything else is is so much easier.